Hi there, I'm Catherine with StyleCat Pro, and I'm really honored today to bring this awesome spotlight interview that I think is going to really touch on a lot of people's, um, well, all their little nerves are going to get like, oh, I found somebody who can help me. <laughs> so let me introduce you today to Debbie Donaire of Heart Act. And Debbie is an authority on stress, anxiety, and depression, but not just on what they are, but how to overcome them. So I'm gonna pass it right on to you, Debbie, because I really want you to give an introduction. I know you're gonna give it deeper. So take the wheel, please. Thank you so much for having me, Catherine. It's a real pleasure to be here. And as Catherine says, I'm Debbie Debonair. I guide career women, 25 years plus, from negative life patterns to triumph and transformation and full empowerment. Mm -hmm. This gift, or should I say these gifts, just gives them courage to take back control. Take back control of their own life on their terms so that they can thrive in their true potential. I love it. <laughs> and that kind of, it comes from the experiences I went through um, most of my life. Right, that's the, I, I, Debbie's got an incredible story, so I'm just going to ask you to, to tell us your oh shite moment because <laughs> this is really what transformed her from where she was to where to the expert that she is now and the leader she is now. So yeah, take that one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I won't give you the whole story because okay. we'll be here all we'll, we'll be here for forever. <laughs> and um, but um, to put it into kind of, I'll give you a little bit of the background. Um, from the age of eight till the age, age of 40 plus, I lived a life in victimhood mode. Uh, I was bullied at school, um, physically and mentally. I was physically bullied, sorry, I was mentally bullied at home, which also went through to um, being mentally bullied while I was married. But it was all because I allowed it to happen. I allowed somebody else most of my life to control my life for me. That spiraled me into clinical depression, um, uh, which I conquered, hence why I'm here today. And also I failed three attempts at suicide. Oh. And those mm -hmm. failures um, happened... Two happened before the oh shit moment um, and one happened after the oh shit moment, which kind of was just a blip on the journey. Uh, the oh shit moment came when I woke up in the middle of the night, pitch black. My ex-husband had already gone. My eight-year-old son was asleep next door. And when I woke up, I was lay on top of the bed with an empty red wine bottle in my hand and the first thing that came to my mind was oh shit my little boy's asleep next door now the reasons that led me to the suicides was in my head I'd convinced myself that my little boy was better off without me because mm. I was the toxic person in his life and when I woke up he was the first person I thought of. And I cannot explain to anybody what happened next other than it was imagination, uh, a phantom. Uh, I just can't put a word to it. Mm. But in the next few minutes from me waking up and seeing the wine bottle in my hand, my son's face was here but he wasn't physically there. And all I remember, and I can see it to this day, was the look in his eyes and the tears coming down his face. And it made me realize that this little boy needed his mum. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, I decided that's it, that's enough. My son is more important than anything in this world. And I then started to embark on the steps to improve my life, take myself out of victimhood, take control of my own life and not 
be controlled by somebody else, not be somebody else's puppet, which I had been for most of my life. And that was my oh shit moment. And I just went on a journey to um, build my confidence, build my self-esteem, um, empower myself so that I could be there for that little boy who needed me. Wow, what a and, transformation. Yeah. yeah. And, it, you know, considering um, I love the theatre and I acted from the age of eight years old, I realised all of that time I hid behind those characters and it was about time I took the mask down. So I took the mask down, I stepped forward and I worked damn hard to bring myself where I am today because nobody now gets in my way. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> and, and this is why I am so passionate about reaching out to other women who feel that they struggle to deal with the basics of daily life because they're being either controlled by themselves in a negative way or controlled by themselves or controlled by someone else. Yeah. And it was because of that control and because of that pounding all the time that I spiraled into clinical depression, went through the anxiety, went through the stress and, and, now I've done so much research on stress, anxiety, depression, its causes, how you know one thing can affect one person and not affect another. Um, so I've really researched it really deeply so that I can now bring people out of stress, anxiety, and depression. I can guide them, but I can't do it for them. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you went know? from being the actor of your own, you know, scenario to being the director <laughs> basically you know you like yeah. got off the stage and went behind the stage and worked on the really important stuff you know for sure and, and you know now I when I work with women I, I say to them you know inside of you you have your own leading lady that needs to come out to step out onto your own life stage the way you want it to evolve Mm -hmm. We can tell each so many stories in our own head that can really over affect us. And I know that, especially in the entrepreneur world, it's, there's so much pressure, you know, when you're running a business that you, you, you feel all the weight of the world because you are all these different things, you know, really, so you, know you juggle, you, you juggle with so many hats, you, you spin in so many plates yeah. and it's understanding when and where to stack those plates so that you only have to deal with maybe one or two yeah. at the time rather than trying to spin them all at the same time. Right, right. Are there like particular, like say somebody is, um, and this is a little bit off of our, we have some, you know, questions I want to make sure I pinpoint, but this is a little bit just from listening to your story. Are there like maybe symptoms or um, triggers that people who might not even know that they're, on that level of depression, do you know what I mean? Like they might be so wrapped up in their game that they have no idea, but things are just keep spinning. Are there things that they can look for that go make that make them go like, "Hey, this is a this is something." Exactly. Yeah, and and you know what what a lot of people um, tend to do is they look at stress, anxiety, and depression as causes, mm -hmm. but they're actually symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay. They are symptoms of a cause, something causes those symptoms. Right. Okay. It's like, for instance, having um, trying to think of a, a, a disease that's not too kind of heavy at the moment. But say you had chicken pox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> chicken pox is because of you developing spots, having itches, scratches, having a temperature. So there's the, the, the spots and the itches and the temperature are all symptoms of the um the chicken pox mm -hmm. so this is why when i say to you know because i've had clients in the past that said but um i'm depressed i've got depression i've got anxiety I've, you know and i'm saying yes i totally understand that but we need to get to the cause mm -hmm. so what is causing your anxiety what is causing your stress what is causing your depression and often i get back it's my anxiety that's causing my anxiety. 
Mm. So it's looking, like you said, for those triggers. Yeah. And, and sometimes it is very hard to find those triggers when you are so inside of it, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it, especially anxiety, anxiety is so overwhelming, you know, and, and the panic attacks and, and you kind of go into a complete kind of catch 22 situation because the more you get anxiety, the more you get the panic attacks. So one of the things that I always stress to people who feel, because when you have anxiety, you can feel it coming on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when, when you feel that coming on, it's to become consciously aware of your breathing. Because if you're not consciously aware of your breathing, your breathing speeds up but you can actually control your breathing. Mm, that's a good you one. You don't need the anxiety to control your breathe, breathing. You can control your, you can control your breathing, which then in turn controls your anxiety. Mm-hmm. So it's not focusing on the anxiety, but focusing on the breathing. And because I work very much from the heart, I work from the heart to the mind and not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Um, and not, you know, not the mind to the heart that one of the um, techniques I share with people is when you feel that coming on, put your hand on your heart because your heart will be going, duh, 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 you know, and then as, as your heart's doing that, your hand's going up and down. Mm-hmm. So if you can consciously be aware of the movement of your hand, you can slow it down. I love it. Slowing down your breathing. Yeah. And kind of subconsciously, your hand starts to slow down because you've started slowing down your breathing and you've slowed down your heart rate. That's a big one. And you've prevented the panic attack. Yeah, that's a big one. That's like definitely taking control of the anxiety right there. Just by breathing and just by that. It seems, you know, it, it seems very simple and the, the technique is very simple but it's not easy and i totally appreciate that it's not easy but yeah. it's about practice yeah yeah you know, it's about being aware of oh my god i can feel it coming on because a lot of people who suffer from anxiety feel it um a bit like um <laughs> menopausal women when they feel it you know coming to a lot of women say i can feel it from my toes and it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and it, you know it takes over me anxiety is very much like that mm. so you get warnings but it's taking control of those warnings right prevent the print the panic attack that's really that's that's Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that's going to help people. I, I mean, it's just, it's such a great, you know, thing because when you are in that middle of that moment, you, you can't see straight, no. but you certainly know when you're, when you're, when you're, you can feel that, that bubbling up and, and just yeah. that calmness of just, you know, I think that's, it's that's, a really- it's, it's just taking control. You yeah. Take- Oh, don't let the anxiety take control you take control because you can yeah 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 i love it oh, yeah. yeah and i'm proof that you can take control because i used to have horrendous panic attacks mm. absolutely horrendous and I've, I've not had a panic attack for i don't know how many years that's great you know be, be, because it once you understand and, and become aware of it you can so control an, a panic attack and a panic attack is caused by the anxiety it's the fight or fight Mm-hmm. you know and it's it's how you how you allow your body and your mind to to counteract all of that yeah yeah i love that just controlling so the um with negative life patterns and in, in your in your life is imbalanced and I mean, is there is there other steps that 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 can be you know taken yeah, and- yeah when i when i first um speak with um a potential, you know, a, well, a, a lady or, or someone who's come to me and, you know, said, you know, how can you help kind of thing. There's, there's kind of three things. The first thing is um, to do with an, your emotional type, okay, because there are different emotional types. But the main two things are 
to look at the current self, how you are in six areas of your life, the main six areas of your life. So those six areas in life, they include things like um, the emotional area of your life, your financial, financial area of your life, and your family and your relationships, just to name a few. And when you have looked at that and you looked at where you are in each of those areas, you know, because you, you, you don't necessarily have to have negative life patterns in all of the areas of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you may only have one or two, but they're so strong that they overtake the positivities of all the other areas in your life. Right. Okay. And then looking at the future self, what do you want those areas of your life to feel like, look like, develop, evolve? How do you want them to make you feel? So you look at those and then you compare where they're at now to where you want them to be. Okay. And then we, fo we focus on um, the priorities, which one is the big one that... Um, really has taken over everything else. I'm a lover of Eat That Frog. Um, if you've ever heard of that book, Eat That Frog, about procrastination. But I, no. <laughs> but I use it in, in this um, environment because we tend to ignore the big thing that's causing all of the other little things that are bubbling underneath. Mm. You know, so it may be that the area of someone's life, it, it, it could possibly say be family in a relationship. And it's just the dynamics have gone wrong or, or something's dysfunctional or, or something's happened. Right. But because it's so big, it's having such a negative effect on the other areas of that person's life. So rather than look at the little ones and getting those out of the way so that we can deal with the big one, we deal with the big one first because what tends to happen is when you deal with the big one first, the little ones actually submerge. Mm. But we still look at them. We, we, I still look at the whole of the six areas. Right, right. And, and, and what I do, um, another kind of tip, um, which helps with the, the overwhelm and especially in the entrepreneurial world, like you said um, earlier about spinning the plates and wearing different hats, is how you start the day. And I share one of the things that I did all those years ago, and I actually still do today because I just love it. And that is um, a mindful meditation that I do while I'm in the shower. Mm. And I absolutely just shut off from everything that's going to happen in the day. You know, if I've kind of begun, before I've gone into the, into the shower and I've, you know, planned out my day, um, know what's going to happen, I'll leave it all outside of the shower room and I go into the shower with a completely blank mind, nothing's there, and I go into the shower and I just wake up all of my senses. So you feel the water, you feel um, the heat of the water, you feel the touch of the water, you, feel, you, you smell the, um, the scent of the shower gel, you feel how the shower gel feels on your body the soap suds, uh, the sound it makes when, you, when you're washing yourself, the sound the water makes as it's hitting, you know, hitting you and then hitting the bath. So you're just bringing all the sights, you know, how, what you're looking at if you've got your eyes open when you're in the shower. And just all of all, but you, you kind of put yourself into a little bubble in some, some respects mm -hmm. because it's just what is happening at that moment in the shower. And it just relaxes you and rejuvenates you, ready for the day ahead. I love Especially that. If you haven't had a good night's sleep. I love that. That's a great way to start the day. That's just the, and we we're so used to just jumping in there and like get it done, <laughs> got to go. It. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't take any longer. No. It does not take any longer at all because I, I actually timed myself once <laughs> to say <laughs> to see whether I did, and it didn't. It didn't yeah. take any longer because, but what it did was it makes you appreciate and become grateful 
of what you've got. So it's a kind of double whammy because it gives you all that mindfulness. It gives you all that relaxation, but it then makes you realize what you already have to be grateful for. Mm. Because when you are dealing with stress, anxiety, and depression, it's all the, I can't, I don't. Mm -hmm. It's all the negatives where, you know, I don't have, I can't have this, I can't do this, I can't do that, you know. Um, and when you're in there, you become grateful of the running water. You become grateful of the fact that you have soap. Mm -hmm. You know, and it starts the gratitude thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, right from the beginning of the day. From a very organic place. From a, if I'm not having to sit in your journal and write the 10 things you're most grateful for, you know, which is like you already feel resistance to that because it feels like you're writing sentences in school because you did something wrong, you know? So this is like a, a really like organic, just great way to just like enjoy that spa moment too. Just the, the like you go to a spa and it's like all about, so your senses and feeling and you're doing it on a daily basis that's a super simple tip that anybody can do i love i love these the thing is as well you can do a very similar thing at the end of the day if you're someone who likes to have a bath because mm -hmm. you can leave everything that's happened in the day yeah. outside of the bathroom get into the bath if you like me i have candles everywhere um but that's just me but Again, it's just awakening mm -hmm. your, well, not even awakening your senses, but being conscious of your senses because you don't want to wake them because obviously, you know, you're going in the bath ready to wind down for the day. Right. Um, you know, so you, you, you kind of do do it in a slightly different way, um, but you, you become more aware of the silence. Um, uh, because in, when you're in the bath, obviously, you haven't got the running water. Yeah. So you have the calmness of the silence, yeah. but you have the feel of the water while you're in the bath and whatever, you know, potion, lotion or whatever you put in the bath. You know, you have those senses, you've got the sense of smell, you've got the light of the candles, if you put candles in there, you know, so you, you're choosing different um, things to be sensitive to mm -hmm. um, in the respect of your senses, not sensitive as in, you know, from a negative point of view right and um, so but it winds you down ready so then bring you down so that you're not all hyped up before you're going to bed go, go to bed and then you're not going to get asleep because oh. of everything that's happened in the day and you go oh, you know and you yeah. get to sleep because yeah. you're still thinking about all the negative things that have gone on in the day yeah. you know i mean obviously i'm not saying everybody has a or the to-do list or the to-do list you know it could be yeah. not necessarily negative but but oh. you're just you're not turning yourself off and just being like, this is my time and, you know. Yeah, yeah. you're not turning yourself off from the to-do time yeah. to the being time. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're still, being, you're still being a human doing and not a human being. And that's such a, that is such a, I mean, it's a super common thing that happens and it's, and, and as an entrepreneur, it's super, super common because, mm -hmm you just never really leave the office because you just, you, you're, you are the office. So this is a great way to like kind of go into a sanctuary mode and come out in a sanctuary mode. I, I really, these are such practical tips, all of the things you're sharing. And in between times, between you coming out of the shower and before you go into the bath, you then have a day where you need to become consciously aware of what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And this is paramount for people who are dealing with stress, anxiety, and depression. Mm -hmm. Because we're not sometimes aware of the triggers because we're not aware of what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. So throughout the day, if you can become conscious of what you're thinking about, and when I set out in my own recovery to, to put this in place, I used to set... Um, times in the day. So I used to say 11 o'clock, two o'clock and five o'clock. And just, just stop. What am I thinking? What's in my head? Right. Is it serving me well? Is it negative? Is it positive? If it's positive, is it positive? If it's positive, I used to actually physically pat myself on the back. Love because it. it's, it's, 
sounds really ridiculous. And if anybody was watching me, you know, they think I'd completely lost the plot. But that action, you are giving yourself something, something, you're giving yourself a reward. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a negative thought, um, it's right, okay, that's really not serving me very well. So that's the negative thought. What's the positive opposite to that? And when you start to practice putting the positive thought back in instead of the negative thought, you know, the say practice makes perfect. And if you do something for 28 to 30 days, it becomes a habit. Well, at the end of the day, you know, someone who is stressed and got stress, anxiety and depression have got there through habits. Mm -hmm that they've been in for more than 30 days. You know, I mean, I was in them for nearly 30 years, well, more than 30 years. Um, you know, so they're not going, you're not going to come out of them overnight. But if you, you know, if you can consciously be aware of those negative thoughts and what those negative thoughts are doing to you, so you can then change them and bring the positives in more often, eventually they'll take over. Oh, beautiful. Beaut this is so good. This is, I mean, I, no, this is so, so helpful. Yeah. You can do it as a thought diary if you want to. Right, yeah. right. But I love the idea of just like these little check-in times and just mm -hmm. like the simplicity because sometimes it's that whole thing of like, you know, you can't always just stop and do a journal. You know, you could be on a bus, you could be driving, but it's just like a check-in time to just check in with where you're at. That's a really, that's a really um, great tip for anybody, whether, even if they're, if you're not suffering from anything, it, it, it because it's just a check-in, it's like, why yes, not? It is, exactly. You know, and if, if for instance, you know, you're not someone who um, is going through the stress, anxiety and depression, um, but you, the, the day hasn't run the way you wanted it to, wanted it to run. Mm -hmm. By having those check-ins, you can see what it is that is triggering or what, what was it that triggered or potentially triggered the thing that had gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Because you're not consciously aware of your thoughts, it's been and gone. Yeah. And it's too late to then, I mean, yes, you can reflect back, but sometimes, you know, depending on, on what's happened in the day and, and how you are feeling, you can't bring it back mm -hmm. because you've blocked it out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so becoming consciously aware of, of, of thoughts and feelings, you know, and how your heart is feeling and what, what's your heart telling you, you know, um, if you if you feel like you've had a bad day and, and you get home and you've got your the pain the pain in your heart as I call it, um, why why have you got that pain in your heart? Mm -hmm. You know what what happened? But you, because you weren't consciously aware of the pain in your heart until because you know a lot of entrepreneurs are on the go one thing after the other one thing after and when they sit down and they stop, that's when the pain comes. Mm -hmm. the judgments yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. know because it's like we're as an entrepreneur you become your own you know you are the manager so you're constantly giving yourself the report of the day like well you didn't do this and you didn't do that you did the, but the, it's always it's just the negative tends to come up before the positive absolutely and one of the things i i really stress when when i'm de when i'm working with people is let's forget about what you didn't do let's forget about what you haven't got let's look at what you achieved, what you've already got, and it really puts things into perspective. Mm -hmm. Because part of what I do is I've also um, developed the um, nine pillars of emotional resilience, which I bring in to the six areas of your life. And those um, include things like self-awareness, responsibility, self-management, acceptance because sometimes we just have to stop pause for breath and accept this is how I am right now at this moment I accept it and I use an acronym quite often and it's called the RAY technique 
and it's recognizing, accepting, releasing and letting go and embracing yourself for doing so. I love it. I love it. You've got a lot of really great programs. I looked on your, on your website. I was checking out your different, your different things. Um, there's different ways to work with Debbie where you can really take on these things. I love that everything was kind of like a retreat, you know, it was like, yeah. there was a retreat. There was like, a, you know, like a deeper retreat. And I was like, oh, and I'm a retreat girl. So I was like, oh, I could just like <laughs> swim in this, you know? That's my holistic counseling coming out. That's oh, it's just so good. You know, it was so good. But one of the things I'm really excited about is that you do have a really great challenge coming up. Uh, uh, it's a, is it a five day challenge? It's a yeah, it's a five day free challenge and it's called rebirth, sorry, reborn and rebirth. Okay. And in that challenge, we reveal um, how the negative life patterns um, basically control your life. So the challenge actually shows you um, the first steps to take, to take back your control so that you can actually thrive in the life that you want to live in. I love it. Raise to your, your true potential. That's fantastic. I'm going to put the links. The links are going to be um, right here in the, the description of this interview so that, so that you can, because it's not too late. To, no, to join this not. challenge right now. It doesn't, so. it doesn't start, the actual challenge itself doesn't start until the 29th of June. Okay. Um, Monday the 29th of June. Um, and the private Facebook group which, where it all takes place, um, that doesn't open until the Friday before. So you've got up till the Friday before. And basically what happens is every day there will be a little task that you need to do. It will take no longer than 30 minutes cool. and then in the afternoon I will be posting out um, putting a post in the Facebook group called an AMA which is ask me anything to do with the task on that day and I mean you can put questions in you know throughout mm. the day but we'll then do um, a live later on in the day to, for me to answer those questions so I'll have seen the questions on on the thread um, looked at the questions and then we'll open a live on the Facebook group to answer all those questions That's and that cool. happens every day and then we have and this is kind of, I'm sorry the, the, I'm just thinking that this is this is a, a challenge that's not necessarily just for for people that that feel that they are that they are um, heavy with with these burdens of the world, but just also like, it's more like a maintenance kind of challenge. Like how to, cause I think it's great for maintenance, you know, like. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the, the whole thing. You know, it, even though it's kind of aimed at career women age 25 plus, yeah. um, it, it's open to every woman who feels that they, you know, they might have a little bit of negativity or, a bit of a negative you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a whole negative life pattern right it may, just be, it may just be something that comes into their life every single day and they don't know how to overcome it right and it's just a great it sounds like just a great tool to have in your toolkit i'm yeah. definitely going to sign up because i just think that's a good tool to have you know so yeah. i'm excited for that that's really really great I, I'm so grateful for you to come on and do this um interview it's been really eye-opening and I love your practicality. I love how it's just, it's so organic and it's so practical and it's not woo and it's not out there and it's not so clinical that you need a dictionary to understand what you're saying. It's super, it's just super like, here's, a, here's something that you can do. It's great, Debbie. It's just That's really it. You know, and, it, and it's being, um, being true to yourself mm -hmm. and, and, and believing and, and getting the belief back that, the lady inside there waiting to come out is allowed to come out. You just need to know how to open the door. I love it. I love it. Now, so for people who are, I mean, definitely I'm sign up for that challenge. You'll see me in there. It, it's going to be, it, I mean, I know that's going to be so good because just listening to you here, I just know I'm excited for what you're going to bring. But if somebody's listening to you and they're like, they want to go deeper right away because they are probably already thinking, wow, I want to, I want to get to know Debbie more and I want to really like 
um, find out what you offer beyond this, what your actual business is, how, yeah. how do they reach you? They um, can reach me on my website, which is www.heartact.co.uk. Okay. They can find me on my Facebook page, which is um, Heart Act Approach. Okay. Uh, they can find me on um, LinkedIn, which is Debbie Debonair on LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram, only just on Instagram, because somebody told me I should be on Instagram. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so and Instagram is Debbie Debonair one. Um, so I tried to make it quite simple. So it's either heart act, heart act approach or Debbie Debonair. <laughs> That's fine. And I'm going to put all those links in here too. And then if they want to, they can hop on a call with you, correct? Yeah, they can, they can hop on what I call my heart call, okay. um, which is a 20 minute call, just so that, you know, they can share with me what they want to share and see whether, you know, what I do is a match for them. Love it. Love it. Because you do have some really great options out there you know and yeah. i think that the challenge is a great way to get to know debbie if you're interested this is a great way to sort of put your feet in and just come out with some tips and some some tools i mean really like already the tools that you shared here today are just gems you know the breathing the check-in points those are like i mean i'm gonna do that today like <laughs> Probably won't have a panic attack today, but I know what it do now. But 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 I'm I'm all about those check-in points. I think that's brilliant and so simple. And and the shower, it's just that's yeah. and the thing with the check-in points, what the check-in points do for you as well is they take you away from what you're doing. Because one of the things entrepreneurs tend to do is keep going. <laughs> and don't give them yeah and don't give themselves <laughs> yeah don't give themselves that break time now yeah. you're only talking five minutes but it's getting you up out of your chair away from your laptop walk about for five minutes do five minute stretches just be aware what's going on in your head walk up and down the stairs for five minutes a bit of exercise you know um just it just takes you away from what you what you've got your head in at that moment mm -hmm. and, and a lot of entrepreneurs kind of get stuck in that more you know stuck in that mode that the next thing they know they've been at the desk since six o'clock and oh my god it's six o'clock at night and i've not even had anything to eat i've not had a drink of water and i've not and they're actually starting to talk at the speed that they've been working all day yeah 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 this is great yeah. All right, Debbie, thank you so much for taking the time out to just have this conversation with me so I could share it with people. I, I am, I'm just honored to know you and, and I'm just thrilled with what you do. Your story is so inspiring and encouraging and, and, and it's just, I love that it's really just about you like taking responsibility and 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 just being the director of your own life it's beautiful so that's a i know you've inspired so many women in your life and and i hope that this interview just inspires more so i want to thank you so much for taking the time oh it's been my pleasure Catherine. and you know thank you so much for uh, inviting me it's been an absolute pleasure Oh, it good. really has oh, good well thank you so much you guys will find all the links um in below so reach out join the challenge and um and we'll see you there with um you know smiley happy positive vibes <laughs> okay thanks debbie thank you